Hello students, Mr. Courtney here. In this video, we're continuing on energy and we're looking at calculating heat of reaction or the enthalpy of reaction. The objectives of this video will be to use and define Hess's law and to calculate the heat of reaction that cannot be directly measured. When we talk about heat of reaction, we're referring to enthalpy change. That is the energy change that accompanies a chemical reaction. It is hard to measure the enthalpy change for a reaction that occurs too slowly or for a reaction that may be the intermediate step in a series of reactions. So we can use thermochemical equations to indirectly determine energy changes that occur in a chemical process or in chemical reactions. So for example, in this reaction here, we have, we have two chemical reactions. If we were to add these reactions together, so we have reaction one or step one and step two, if we were to add them together and we're going to cancel out the the substances that are on opposite sides of the equation so for example we have one mole of water in the first reaction as a reactant and two moles of water in the second reaction as a product so we cancel out one mole from the second reaction as a product we also cancel out our hydroxide reaction because it's a product on one and a reactant on the other one that and we also cancel out now our sodium ions. What that gives us is a, our overall reaction. So here we just added two reactions and there are two thermochemical reactions to give us a single reaction. So what this allows us to do is to determine the heat of reaction indirectly by using the known heats of reaction for two or more thermochemical equations. And our energy is represented here. This is our enthalpy change in these reactions. So by adding these reactions and also adding our enthalpy changes, then we end up with the overall enthalpy change for that particular reaction that we're interested in. What this is called is called Hess's law of heat summation or just Hess's law for short. So the overall enthalpy change for a reaction is equal to the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual steps in the process. And that's what we just did there. We added the individual steps together to get the overall change. So step one plus step two to give you the overall reaction of step three. Another way of thinking of Hess's law is that is in terms of getting from point A to point B or getting from home to school. You, you have different routes that you can take, but the overall change is that you get from home to school or if you leave in school to go home, you may not go home straight. You may take a detour, pass by a friend's home. You may go watch a basketball game or something of that sort. So you're taking a different route instead of going directly home. But the overall change is that you left from point A, let's say from school to point B to home. So that's what Hess's law deals with. How can we use Hess's law to calculate the heat the, the um, enthalpy of a reaction so for example we have two reactions here nitrogen gas plus oxygen to give us nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen monoxide plus oxygen to give us nitrogen dioxide and we have the enthalpy change for each reaction if we were to add these together so we cancel out the the substances that are common to both of them but on opposite sides so we cancel out our two moles of nitrogen monoxide in each one and that gives us our overall reaction. Nitrogen gas plus two moles of oxygen to give us two moles of nitrogen dioxide. Now we add our enthalpy changes also. So we're gonna add our 180 plus negative 112 and that gives us our overall change of 68 kilojoules. So that means to convert the reaction between two moles of nitrogen gas and two moles of oxygen gas to produce two moles of nitrogen dioxide as an enthalpy change of 68 kilojoules. So that means 68 kilojoules of energy is required for the conversion of or from the synthesis of two moles of nitrogen dioxide from one mole of nitrogen and two moles of oxygen gas. So if we're looking at another example, if we were to calculate the heat of reaction required for the conversion of diamond to graphite, both diamond and graphite are made up of carbon. So we're given, we want this overall conversion. We want the enthalpy change for this conversion. Or we're given these two equations. 
but both diamond and graphite are reactants but we want diamond as our reactant and we want graphite as our product so we want this to be our product so that means we have to flip this equation that is make the reactants products and the products become reactants so we do this now once we flipped it if the reaction is reversed then the sign is also reversed so it's negative it was negative 393.5 now it has to be positive 393.5 so again if the reaction is reversed then the sign of the enthalpy is also reversed so now we can go ahead and add these two reactions together to get the overall change from diamond to graphite and calculate our enthalpy change here we see carbon dioxide they're on opposite sides so they will cancel we go ahead we also cancel our oxygen so we left with diamond to graphite that's the overall reaction that we wanted now we add our enthalpies and that gives us our overall enthalpy change of negative 1.9 kilojoules so if you're given the following data you know, and asked to calculate the enthalpy for the reaction. So you have to look at what is it you want as your reactants and what is it you want as your products. So in the overall reaction that we're looking for, nitrogen monoxide is a reactant. But we're given a reaction where nitrogen monoxide is a product. So that means this reaction here, this first reaction has to be flipped. That is. We take nitrogen monoxide, make it a reactant, and take our nitrogen and oxygen gases, make them products. And if we flip the reaction, reverse the reaction, then we also have to change the sign on our enthalpy. So our enthalpy of formation will now be negative 90.29. We want, and here we go. So we have this reaction, which is negative 90.29, so we flipped it. And we have our second reaction and we look for what cancels what is common on opposite sides of its reactions so we cancel our half mole of nitrogen gas but in the first reaction we have half mole of oxygen and in the second reaction we have one mole of oxygen so we can only cancel a half so we cancel a half mole of oxygen and that leaves us with our overall reaction of nitrogen monoxide plus half mole of oxygen gas to give us our nitrogen dioxide and that is the overall change that we wanted so now we're going to go ahead and add our enthalpy changes negative 90.29 plus 33.2 kilojoules and we get an overall change of negative 57.1 kilojoules so here you see again all we're doing is that we just added the individual steps together to get our overall reaction and then we add the enthalpy changes for each reaction to get the overall enthalpy change for that particular reaction. Let's look at standard heat formation, or standard heat of formation, sorry, or enthalpy of formation. That is the energy change required to form one mole of a compound from its elements in the elemental states, or in a standard states at 25 degrees Celsius. The enthalpy of formation for a free element in its standard state is zero. So for example, if you have carbon as a solid, then its enthalpy of formation is zero. Oxygen as a gas, its enthalpy of formation is zero. Sodium as a solid, its enthalpy of formation is zero. Because that is how it is, or these elements exist in their standard state. And again, the enthalpy of formation for a free element is zero when it's in its standard state. And to get our enthalpy change, it's the summation of enthalpy of formation for your products minus the summation of enthalpy of formation of your reactant. So again, we're going with the final minus initial. So your final minus your initial. So that means when we see the delta, that delta reminds us that we're looking at the enthalpy of formation for products minus enthalpy of formation of our reactants. So we're asked to calculate the enthalpy change for the following reaction. So we have ethane plus oxygen to give us water and carbon dioxide. And we're given the enthalpy of formation for each substance. So what we have to look at is that to calculate our enthalpy change, we need to do the summation of 
enthalpy for our products minus the summation of enthalpy of formation for our reactants. So let's start with our products. We have six moles of water. Now we have to look at what state water is in water is as a gas. So that means we use an enthalpy of formation for water as a gas. Now since we that is per mole, this here, this kilojoules, this number of kilojoules, enthalpy of formation is per mole. But since we have six moles, we need to multiply it by the coefficient. So six times 241.81, 0.818 plus four moles times 393.509 kilojoules per mole for our carbon dioxide. And that gives us a total of negative 3,024.94 kilojoules. We go ahead and do calculate for our reactants. We have ethane and oxygen. Enthalpy of formation for ethane is negative 83.85 and we have two moles. So we multiply by two. Enthalpy of formation for oxygen is zero because oxygen is in its elemental state. It's, it's existing as gas, oxygen gas. So it's in its elemental state. Its enthalpy of formation will be zero. So we get our total of negative 167.7. Enthalpy, change in enthalpy is equal to products minus reactants. So that's negative 3024.94 minus negative 167.7 kilojoules. And that gives us a final answer of negative 2857.2 kilojoules. So that means enthalpy change that occurs when we combust two moles of ethane in the presence of seven moles of oxygen. Enthalpy change that accompanies this reaction or the combustion of ethane is negative 287, negative 2857.2 kilojoules. And re remember, since the enthalpy change is negative, that means heat is released. So that means the reaction is exothermic. And let's look at this one. We have to calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction. Water being decomposed into hydrogen and oxygen. So when we look at this, we do products minus reaction. So not reaction products minus reactants that's what we're looking at we look at our products our products are all in the elemental states because it's hydrogen gas hydrogen gas is in its elemental state oxygen gas is in its elemental state so the enthalpy change for our products will be equal to zero then we do our enthalpy change for our reactants and in this case we have water as a liquid so we're going to use negative 285.830 and not negative 241.818 because we have to look at the state of the compound. In this case, oxygen, water is in the liquid form. So we use enthalpy of formation that corresponds to water in its liquid form, not its gaseous form. And we have to multiply that by two because we have two moles of water present in the reaction. And that gives us negative 571.66 kilojoules, zero minus negative 571.66 gives us overall enthalpy change of 571.66 kilojoules. And here, since we see the enthalpy change is positive, that means energy is absorbed, energy is taken in, so that is an endothermic reaction. Okay, this takes us to the end of this video. We talked about Hess's law heat of formation using Hess's law to calculate or to determine the enthalpy changes for reactions that cannot be directly measured. So I hope this video helps you a lot. Uh, you can go ahead and click on the like button below if this has been helpful to you. You can go ahead and leave comments and leave me ways in which I can improve on these videos. And thank you for taking the time to view. Until the next time, I'm out. Blessings.